Right, boys. When you open your um, exam paper for Excel, it will look like there's a huge amount of text for you to work through. So the idea of this lesson today is to try and minimise that so it's manageable, so you feel that it's achievable. History is a rich and exciting topic. The last century or so is well illustrated and documented, and the curriculum now requires pupils to assess the accuracy and bias of historical sources. Keywords, names, dates are all things that we classically see difficulty in and almost expect in many ways. Um, but also sequencing for my subject particularly, amongst others, but in humanities as a whole, we discuss sequencing an awful lot and how we can approach different situations but give students the tools that they can, they can overcome those barriers. This is a genuine source A that is taken from the examination paper. We need to make it manageable. You will look at that and think, I've got an awful lot of reading, I've got an awful lot of writing to do. In actual fact, it's a lot more manageable than it appears to be. I'll read through it if you can just follow with me. Life in Russia is proving exceptionally difficult for me. It's finding methods by which students can order things. So the most basic one is a timeline. A classic thing we would see is that you would look at a timeline and you would have maybe the year zero and then the year 2000 and we'd have everything up one end rather than just spacing things out. So we have to look not only at structure but actually the knowledge and understanding of time as a concept and then consider that within work because that, that puts them in a better position to answer. We work a lot with source analysis so we might provide a visual source to begin with. There are certain students that flourish with text sources, but we tend to begin with imagery. They can then build on that with simply taking out the information that they can see, they can physically see, and then developing that by analysing. There's a constant stream in history of recalling information, analysing information and then evaluating it. And if we can get that basic building block in place in terms of the recall or the um, inference, then we can build on that, analyse and then hopefully evaluate when they reach the, the highest level. Does this sound positive towards what the Tsar is doing? Does it support the Tsar? Yeah. OK. If I said to you, George, does it support the people of Russia, what would you say? No. no. Despite the fact that there is a large focus on literacy, in actual fact, to begin with, and certainly from year nine, we look more at building knowledge. So if, if a boy is struggling with confidence or struggles in general, then we build that level of trust. Um, and it just means that they're, they're not afraid to answer questions. Once we've got to that point, we can start developing literacy and language techniques. And we can focus on those key terms, put pro formas in place so that they can use different things to structure their work. And once we've done that, they're in a much more strengthened position to provide written answers and things of that, of that nature. Mm -hmm. Like so many academic subjects, a multi-sensory approach is important for building trust and confidence among these Year 11 learners. Even just from uh, keeping teaching interesting and keeping learning interesting, it's important. But it also means that they, they don't always associate certain lessons with certain skills. Um, there's things that cross over between different subjects, but also that if we use a lot of visual prompts alongside an auditory approach, we balance out some of the difficulties that many of the boys experience. And all of those things put together ensure that we are offering a diverse curriculum, but also that we continue to build that trust even, even when boys are in year 11. I think trust is the absolute key. If students can come into a classroom and feel absolutely comfortable, whilst keeping within the remit of a classroom, of course, then they feel they can offer answers. We try and foster a culture of boys feeling more confident about answering questions. And if we can do that, they become more creative in their writing. And it's so, so important that they do have that creativity and that they feel they can look at different things that they have, have strengths in rather than considering what they think I want to hear or what an examiner wants to hear. I think you have to make everything manageable. It appears 
that history is a huge, really, really broad um, spectrum of information and you have to know all of it. In actual fact, although it would be great for everybody to know all of it, obviously from my perspective, I think we have to make things specific and manageable and achievable. If students come into classes and don't feel that something is achievable, then they're never going to feel as though they're working towards it. So from my perspective, I try to keep things manageable and ensure that boys know what they need to do to achieve the this next level. Exposure. Looking at these sources exposes you to what you're more likely to see as we move forward throughout the year. And if you can do that, you have strengthened the position you're in and you are putting yourself in the best position to achieve the grade that you want at the end of the year. Everyone happy? So to recap Lewis's main tips for teaching history. Build knowledge and trust to give students confidence in answering questions. Provide structuring tools, writing frames and linking words. Help students understand time as a concept to help with sequencing. Use images to help fix ideas in the memory. Keep tasks specific, manageable and achievable.